and today we are giving very much raw we're gonna just jump right into it honey we have this beautiful model which is one of my loyal clients been with me for a few years and we wanted to do something basic today but i wanted to do something different show you guys how creative you can get for carnival for prom i just wanted to show some colors use some colors some gems so i just wanted to you know the look is very self-explanatory and y'all always say lachey you don't do enough exotic glam so here is one so i jump right into it the first thing you'll do with your client is cleanse the face with noxema wipes this is to avoid any breakouts to have a clear skin and also, I went in with the Air Sponge Translucent Powder to set her brows. I love this technique because it's a little bit more easier to fill in the brows to my liking. Very natural. Um, and I'm just doing natural brow strokes with the NYX pencil and the shade Espresso. Then right after that, I'll be um, molding down her eyebrows to make it have like more of a luminous look. And with using the dual lash glue, it helps your eyebrows be long lasting. You can keep it on for a while. I know a lot of the girls um, like to have that more tinted eyebrow look or microbladed look. And sometimes ladies don't want to wake up every morning and do their eyebrows. You know, you want to keep them brows on so they can last a little while. They can last a few days. Now that we filled in the brows, now it's time to conceal. And you'll go in with a concealer shade that says least two shades lighter than original skin tone. I went in with Tarte Shade Concealer in the shade Light Medium Sand. Now, to shape out the top of her brow, you'll be going in with your client's foundation shade just to avoid a halo brow.
with that same Tarte Shade Concealer. I applied it on her lids just so it can be a base for her shadows. And then I'll go in with the Airspun Translucent Powder just to set that concealer in place, just to avoid any creasing when it comes to the shadows. The first shadow color that I used today was the transition shade of a brown. I used the Zulu palette by Juvia's Place. I don't want to show it because, honey, I done pinned that palette with that brown like crazy. But you can use any brown that you prefer. And also, you can also use the brown that's in this palette that I'll be presenting today. So I'll just blend into her crease and go towards her eyebrow just to have that detailed contour look towards the nose. But stay low, stay in place when it comes to that one shadow. And we'll be only using one shadow for that transition just to make it more easier. Now I will be showing you guys the method of how I do my cut creases. I went in with the Tarte Shade Concealer in the shade Light Beige. If you want to use a cut crease concealer or you can even use a um, eyeshadow base, it's up to you. Um, P. Louise also has great bases for cut creases, but today we use Tarte Shade Concealer. Um, I went in with one of the lightest shades, like more of like a white shade um, and I just connected the dots and formed my cut crease. Um, it's better to do this method because you will know the height and the form of how you will have your cut crease and it's the easy guide. It's just like tracing and coloring. Just fill it in, fix up the lines, make it crisp and clean. Now you'll see me going back and forth from eye to eye because I'm standing in front of her and making sure that each cut crease is at least even. So before you move on, make sure that you stand in front of your client and see what you have to fix, see what you have to sharpen up, see what lines aren't straight. And that is the sign of being a perfectionist. I even tell my students, do not be lazy when it comes to your work. It will show. Be on top of your clients. Like, Make sure everything is perfect before they walk out the door just to avoid any backlash from anyone. And also, when your client walks out that door, your name, your brand is on that client's face. They walk into the Winn-Dixie. They walk into Walmart. They're going to say, hey, this girl did my makeup. And it just builds up a clientele, and that's how that works. So I got a PR package from one of the best 
um, New York MUAs. And this is the Wild Side Palette from Makeup by Melissa. I'll make sure I put the tag down in the description box below. Um, if you guys ever see me use another palette from her, I use the new Precision Palette, which is one of my favorites. So we'll be juggling from this palette and her new Precision Palette. So I love um, the pigments on this. Very creamy, um, very pigmented. I just over love it. Um, one thing I can say is when it comes to her palettes, it's well worth it. You will run through them palettes because it will become your favorite palette. You know when you get a palette and you use it once and you just throw it back in a, in a box or something like that. But when it comes to her palettes, it's something where you get addicted to it. Now, if I did a lot of girls to request a lot of colors, this palette would have been panned and would have been done. <laughs> but we're in a generation right now where people don't use a lot of colors. You know, the girls come in, get naked, natural. They do things like that. So I was supposed to do a natural look for today. But I was like, no, I want to use this palette. I want to use some colors. I want to challenge you guys to use more colors. And when you have that day where you have to get out your comfort zone, you can already know how to handle it and make your bread. The first shade we'll be using for her cut crease is in the shade Mary Jane. This is a very matte and creamy green. And then also to smoke out that end of her crease to make everything look blended very seamlessly. I went with more of like a smoky brown. It's called Ginger Me. And I just wanted everything to flow together. So make sure that you guys are blending and that you notice what is not pigmented enough and what you need to add on to more. Now we'll be going in with the second shade in the shade Mari Gold. This is more like a yellowish gold and I wanted to blend the colors together to look like it was more of a gradient look and a sunset look. And then in the front of her cut crease to end it all up, we'll be going in with a matte white shadow. This is from her other palette, um, the new Precision palette. Now I'll be going in with this white gold loose glitter pigment. This is from J. LaRue Cosmetics. And then also to bring a little bit more pop, I wanted to add some rhinestones. So I went with the dual lash glue and I went in with one of my favorite set of rhinestones. This is the tool that comes with it. You can get it off of Amazon. Just look up rhinestones and it will pop up.
Now I will be going in with my gel black liner from Elf Cosmetics, which is one of my favorite liners. It dries down very fast and it's very long lasting. And as you guys can see, I love a very, very sharp liner. I want it to look like it's gonna cut somebody, okay? So when you are doing a liner, I see a lot of people um, that's not really as used to doing liners. Avoid, I, actually, this one thing I can say, get in your client's face. Get real close up so you can see, so you can have enough control and hold that gel liner tight so you can be in control of how you want the liner to be. When you are doing that sharp liner, um, I see a lot of people do like a curve liner where it's like going into their eyeshadow. I don't know, but it's better to go straight out towards the um, edges because it looks more sharp. Now I will be going in with the Milk Grip Primer, which is one of my favorite primers. It helps with long lasting foundation and the foundation just melts into the skin. The foundation we'll be using today is golden caramel this is in the shade 332 I believe, yeah 332 this is from the maybelline superstay foundation 24 hour and i love this foundation this is what i started off with this is the foundation i went viral with it will forever be one of my favorites really you have to just look around or look on amazon or ebay or look at your like nearest walmart and see if they still got a few shades left but really they no longer have the whole line of 24 hour superstay now a lot of you guys ask me the difference between superstay 24 hour and 30 hour the 30 hour one is very very dry um it can get khaki very fast so make sure you moisturize your clients real good and do not allow that foundation to dry down because you'll have to wipe it all the way off or it'll get too cakey if you do try to avoid it. Um, but I'm going with my Instapop brush by Real Technique. And I'm just blending that into her skin. Now we'll be going in with the same concealer that we used to shape her brows. This is the Tarte Shade Concealer in the shade Light Medium Sand. And these are the areas where we'll be highlighting. And I will go in with a setting brush from Real Technique and just begin to blend everything out.
to contour the face we'll be going in with the l'oreal infallible wear concealer this is at least two or three shades darker than her original skin tone this is just to bring everything together i also just to snatch the face and her features and it was in the shade coca Now we'll be going in with a light shade. This is a shade that's at least two shades or three shades lighter than her original skin tone and the first shade that we used to uh, conceal her. This is a brightening shade. This is to make all her features more bright. And if you do not like a bright under eye for your makeup, girl, I don't know how you are doing it, but it brings it all together and you'll see by the end of the look. Now we'll be setting that concealer. We'll be going in with the Derma Blend Translucent Powder. And this will also help to keep those areas brightened. And then I'll be going with the Inglock Black Liner, which is very creamy, very pigmented, and is very easy to glide along. And I'll be going in with a small angle brush just so you can get your lines of your liner defined. And then to set the remaining of her face, we'll be going in with the Huda Beauty Powder. Um, if I forget anything that I use today, I'll make sure that I put it down in the description box below.
the bronzer we'll be using today is the Morphe Bronzer 8T palette. And I'll be going in to chisel up the face, bring in some more color. So the reason why we use two setting powders, let me get in detail with that. So the first powder is which the which is the lighting powder um, to keep your areas where you lightened up the face light. And then the second powder is to bring all that together and also to set the face so you won't have any transfer with your makeup and so your makeup can be matte and long lasting. So that's the reason of using two different setting powders. Now I'll be popping on some blush from that same bronzer palette and I over love blush so you'll see that I'll put a little bit more blush on the tip of her nose. It honestly is a very good idea. It really snatches the nose. I want you guys to really try it and one thing about it for the ones who don't like blush, I don't know how <laughs> you don't but it just gives that Barbie filtered look like it has to be at it. And now I'm going to snatch her features. I'm going to go right back in and keep that under eye brighten with that same Derma Blend translucent powder. And then to snatch her features, I'm going in with the Huda Beauty powder and just snatch her features, snatch her nose, her cheekbones, just so it can look more defined. This is one of my favorite parts. This is time for the lips while the client is baking. We'll be going in with a brown lip liner. This is from Ruby Kisses, which is very hard to find. You'll have to look at your nearest beauty supply store and load up. Um, and now I'll be going in with also a nude matte gloss. This is from Murphy in the shade Virgin. And to get your nude a little bit more lighter, um, the best bet is to get the lightest concealer get a little dot and blend it in the center of the lip or have your client pat their lips um just so okay have that ombre cute look you know cute lip and then you'll top it off with a hair store gloss um the hair store gloss is in a brand of broadway it's at least two dollars load up and get you some gloss and that's this is one of my favorite new lips this is really most of the lips that i do is either this one or a red lip but I'm going to try to get out of my comfort zone and do more of like a bold lip one day for you guys. I tell my girls, I be like, girl, look in the mirror. And when they look in it, they're like, oh, yeah, period. Girl, we look good. We look too good. We gonna step out. Yeah, it's giving very much. But now, we're going to go in with my MAC Studio Fix 
powder. The first shade is more of a brightening shade. You see how I still blended that powder away and it still made her under eye look bright as hell, which I over love. Um, this shade is the NC30. Um, I wanted to keep her under eye brightens and with the rest of her face, which is her original skin tone, um, we're going in with NC45. And ladies, majority of all these brushes are from Real Technique or Morphe. Those are the only brushes I really touch my hands on because I over love them in a glass for years. As you guys can see, I'm going in between brushes with the blush and trying to blend out everything. One thing about it, when you are blending a lot of powders together, sometimes your blush will fade away. Um, sometimes your bronzer wouldn't be as vibrant. So I like to keep that, you know, I like to keep that vibrant, you know? And I love for it to pop, so I brung it back. <laughs> and I kept blending until I felt like it was at least more seamlessly done. Um, and now we're gonna get ready to spray the face. My favorite setting spray is by Morphe, which is the one of the best, and I feel like I would not live without Morphe setting spray. Now to highlight, we'll be going in with the Juvia's Place Warrior Palette. And I love this for the lighter skin girls. You can always use the shimmer shadow for a highlighter. I just love how it pops. And I'm just going to answer a few questions while you guys see everything is self-explanatory. Um, a lot of you guys ask questions about where are you located? Y'all, I'm located in Miami, Florida. Um, basically around Hollandale Beach area. Um, when it comes to me being a Miami makeup artist, I'm very known. Um, I give advice to people. Um, people always ask me, what is one thing people can say about you? Um, one thing a person can say about me is they, ne they never know what they're getting, okay? I come off very strict with my rules, very strict with how I love things to fall in order, only because it avoids problems. And I'm going to be honest, when I was a beginner, and if you guys can vouch for this, if you are a beginner, when I was a beginner, I felt like so many people took advantage. So many people ran over me. So many people made me feel like I was less to none. And I had no control. I had ran into a lot of negative energies, a lot of things like that. So when I put my foot down as I grew as a professional MUA, and they see these rules, and they see this and this, they don't know what they're going to go into when they sit in my chair. But when they sit in my chair, they're like, oh, my God, Lachey is so sweet. We having so much fun talking, getting to know each other. And they become my loyal clients, and they become family. Um, so it's no problem with putting your foot down. You'll have the best experiences. You won't go, with, you won't go through no bad clients when you just become a business person. Um, and I just wanted to address that because a lot of people ask me a lot of questions like that. I see it all the time. But being a known MUA, it's so much, it's so much to handle. Um, you're trying to balance out your life. Then you're booked all the time, 10 to 15 girls a day. Then with me being a YouTuber, you see I took some time from YouTube. But I'm back, and you have to just find that balance in your life if you are trying to be a professional MUA and an influencer. Um, now, as you guys can see, this white shadow, I wanted to pop with the liner, with the graphic liner. This shadow is that matte white that we used. I just popped that under, and I love how it made it look so, you know, just look so raw, okay? It just gives very much. 
so she looked like a rock, uh, walking filter, as you guys can see, and it's giving very much raw babes. Okay. And one thing about this look, it was when I do creative looks like this, it's very off the dome, very off the top of my head, and it comes out to be so, so gorgeous, you know? And I tell people, if you are going to use filter, make sure you can back it up. Make sure people can see the option of you doing your work without filter. And YouTube doesn't use any filters. So for the haters, I love you guys too, and I love my raw babes. But one thing about YouTube, you can't use a filter option. This is raw. This is uncut. This is no filter. This is smooth. This is just talent. Sometimes people have to appreciate that talent doesn't always have to be a filter. Uh, sometimes people are just gifted. Sometimes people are just talented. And I just want you guys to seek that in. I just want to give some love and advice to that. But I love the ones who always support Lachey's Glams. We'll be ride or die. So I'm going to try to go a little bit more live here and there on my Instagram, at Lachey's Lambs. If you guys want to follow me on TikTok, at Lachey's Lambs as well, you can. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and click that subscription bell so you can be notified whenever I post. Make sure you subscribe and tell a friend to tell a friend that this is the page where you learn all the gems. I love you guys so much. And toodles. Mwah.